If 50 million rand is the maximum investment, what other compliance issues should investors be concerned about? Sure, so there's a whole host of compliance issues which your Section 12J manager needs to be very acutely aware of and needs to manage on an ongoing basis. I think we'll touch on some of the high level concepts that you need to be aware of as any investor coming into Section 12J when chatting to your investment manager and making sure that they've complied with the relevant rules. I think fundamentally Section 12J was designed to be a fund. And so when SARS put the legislation in, what they said is that no single investor in the actual top level in the Section 12J company may represent more than 20% of the total money that you've raised in a Section 12J. So for example, if we were to raise 100 million Rand into a Section 12J fund, no single individual or the connected persons thereof may own more than 20 million Rand worth of the shares in that business. That ensures that you get a nice diverse spread of investors into the actual Section 12J company. And then at the underlying, a similar rule applies. So you mentioned the 50 million. What that rule says is that no investment that the Section 12J fund or company makes at an underlying level may be more than 50 million Rand book value of assets. So not NAV including gearing, book value of assets the day preceding your investment. But it goes on further to say that no single investment that the Section 12J company makes may represent more than 20% of the money that the fund raised. So when you look through it, what SARS have tried to do is create a fund where you have a whole large pool of investors at the top and you have a pool of unrelated investments at the underlying level. I think that that's the first key concept. <coughs> the second relates to this concept of impermissible trades. So in order to govern which areas of the economy the Section 12J manager invests into, SARS were very kind. They said you can invest into anything with five major exceptions. And those exceptions are any business that primarily trades in fixed property with the exception of a hotel keeper as defined. And that's with the real angle to promote uh, tourism in the hotel sector in South Africa. You may not invest into any form of a financial services provider, any professional services firm, so a accounting firm or an audit firm or anything like that. You may not invest into any business that trades in the so-called sin industries, so uh, alcohol, tobacco, liquor, gambling type business. And the businesses that we invest into must trade mainly in South Africa.